What's up guys? Learning with Rich here. In this lesson, we are going to add Pratt flat truss to our steel frame to the entryway roof, this area here. Okay, and then we are going to draw truss in our plan view by selecting the column located on each side of the roof span. Okay, so I'm going to open the 3D view as well by clicking this icon, default 3D view. And then after that, I'm going to click this icon here. So I want to see the floor plan and then the 3D view side by side. Now, if I want my floor plan to be on the left side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this view here. And then after that, I'm going to select tile views again. There you go. Right, so I now have the floor plan. I'm going to zoom into this area here and then I'm going to zoom in the 3D view to this area here. Alright, so let's do this. So from the structure tab, structure panel, I'm going to select truss, structural trusses. So it adds a truss to the structural model. So I'm going to select this one. And then after that, from the properties, I'm going to make sure that Pratt flat truss is selected. Okay, so this is what we are going to use. And also from the draw panel, so we will be using here line tool to sketch our truss. Okay, so now I'm going to change the settings here. So for the uh, bearing cord, I'm going to change it. So before I change the bearing cord or any other options here, I'm just going to draw first my truss. So I'm going to select the line tool here and then I'm going to pick this um, E.5 column, that intersection. So let's click that one and then I'm going to click this one as well. So I'm going to click that and there you go. So there's now our truss. So we are going to modify this truss here. So I'm going to select here modify to terminate the tool. All right. Okay, here's our truss. So I'm going to edit this one. So we can select here in the 3D view or we can also select here on the plan view. Okay, so on the plan view, I'm going to click that. And then from the instance properties, I'm going to change the constraints here first. So instead of zero fit, okay, I'm going to change that to minus three feet space five inches so that will gonna be the value of my start level offset as well as the end level offset so i'm gonna select that control c and then pick here control v all right so that's the value and then for the bearing cord i'm gonna make sure that it is a uh, bottom so i'm not gonna change the rotation angle but for the dimension here, I do not want this height here. So I'm going to change that to 3 feet. Okay, so 3 feet and then I apply. There you go. Okay, so as you can see, it's now offset. The start level now is offset minus 3 feet 5 inches. So a while ago, this one is 0, right? So let's change that to 0. And then I'm going to apply. So before it's like that. Okay, so what if I change this to 3 feet? By the way, if you're going to type 3 feet and 5 inches, you can just type 3 and then space 5. Okay, Revit will read it as 3 feet 5 inches. Why? Because our current unit is set to feet and inches. Okay, so that's why if you are going to type here like 10, Revit will understand that as 10 feet. So that's why if you want to type 10 inches, make sure you type 10 inches. Otherwise, that is 10 feet. Okay, if you're not going to put the symbol for feet. So now I'm going to type here 3 space 5. So that is uh, 3 feet 5 inches. I'm going to make that negative. And then for the end level offset, I'm going to make it 3 space 5. So positive. Okay, so let's see what will happen. So I'm going to select apply. And there you go. So this is now how it looks like. Okay, so that's why I'm going to change my end level offset to minus 3 space 5. And then I'm going to select here apply. There you go. 
So there's now the end level offset and start level offset minus 3 feet 5 inches. Okay, and then we also change here the truss height to 3 feet. Okay, so now the next thing that we will be doing here is I'm going to go to the 3D view because there is an excess truss here still a member which is this one we don't need this one and we also don't need this one here so this is unnecessary still so we are going to remove that one so how how to do that so make sure select pinned elements here is enable because if this is disable it will be difficult for you to select or you really can't select it Okay, you can't select because this element is pinned element, right? So for you to be able to select each steel here, it would be easier if you enable the pin, the select pinned elements. So you will be able to select pinned elements. And then you can hover now your pointer to that excess steel. And then you can press the tab once. Do not click, just hover your pointer over the steel. And then press tab once. As you can see, it's now highlighted. So once you see it highlights, you can click it now. And then there's the icon pin, right? So I'm just going to unpin that first. And then I'm going to delete that. Okay, by clicking this or pressing delete on your keyboard. There you go. So we don't need that. I'm going to do that as well to the other side. So let's hover our pointer over the steel. Press tab once and then click. Once you see it highlights, unpin, and then delete. There you go. There you go. So that's it for this um, simple exercise. So hopefully, by the way, let's check this one first on elevation. So let's double click this. Let's see how it looks like. There you go. Okay. I'm going to select tile views again. So this is my elevation, this is my 3D view, and then this is my floor plan view. Okay? So thank you for watching, guys. Have a nice day.